brick's lack of lateral strength. When a brick wall encounters stress from the side, the mortar holding it together can fail. Some engineers at the time believed that any brick building over 10 stories will get knocked over in a strong wind. How will the Monadna combat the legendary Chicago winds at 16 stories? The answer seems simple. Add thickness to the walls. Walls in an average brick building are usually one to two feet thick. For the Monadnock, engineers triple that to six feet thick on the ground floor. But the apparent solution creates a tremendous problem. The completed Monadnock weighs an estimated 50,000 tons. The building is so heavy, it begins to sink. The Monadnock is designed to showcase brick's potential for high-rise construction. Instead, it highlights the material's limitations. Just two years after the Monadnock opens, an addition is made. Another massive building stretching half a city block. The new structure seems identical to the original, but beneath the brick is a secret, a steel frame. In the 19th century, the mass production of steel emerges and changes the face of construction. Lightweight, flexible, and strong under lateral stress, steel is seemingly everything brick isn't. Steel permits the frame of the addition to be much thinner and lighter than the walls of the original. The addition to the Monadnock represents a new chapter in brick construction, composite buildings. Steel gives architects a new tool to build higher, stronger, and faster. As buildings soar ever higher, brick takes on a new purpose, aesthetic beauty. It is really, really, really thick paint that lasts a long time. And because of its traditional look, there's a great many people who prefer the aesthetics of the brick. The Chrysler building, with its wonderful Art Deco top in New York, is clad in three million blue glazed bricks. So brick ceases to be used as a structural material, but it retains great importance as a decorative cladding. Before we used brick as the load-bearing element and there was something covering it and brick was the sort of utility part of it. Nowadays though, brick is now the aesthetic part and behind the brick is some type of steel or concrete frame which is taking all the load. Today, just down the street from the Monadnock, a new composite building stretches into the sky. At 50 stories, the Columbian will be the tallest brick building in Chicago. Its frame will be fashioned out of nearly 3,000 tons of steel and more than 50 tons of concrete. And on the outside, it will be adorned with over 450,000 bricks. Back in the turn of the century, when they were building the Monadnock building and other buildings like that, architects and builders were limited to how high they could build the masonry. Today, we've got the Columbian, it's 50 stories high. Same material, brick on the outside. And while a lot of the construction has changed and a lot of the design aesthetic has changed over the years, brick absolutely has a timeless quality about it. While using the modern materials of steel and concrete allows engineers to build stronger and faster, modern composite buildings bring new challenges. In composite buildings, moisture can collect between the internal structural walls of concrete and steel and the brick exterior. The result can be erosion and decay at the core of the building. Eliminating that moisture is crucial. We need a drainage system for these walls, considering that we're in the northern part of Illinois where the weather changes dramatically from winter to rain, and then we have the real hot summers and the fall and the moisture. In the Columbian, the solution is a two-inch cavity wall that collects the water and drains it away from the building. The technique bricklayers use to make this happen 
is an intricate one. Before starting a row of bricks, the mason sets down a steel shelf that is covered with a rubberized waterproofing surface. He places a piece of rope in the mortar between bricks. This will act as the wick to carry the water away from the interior wall. The water will be safely carried outside the building, where it can't do any damage. Composite buildings permit brick to soar higher than ever before. No longer bearing the structural load, it is the beauty of brick that allows it to survive in the world of modern construction. Strong, durable, virtually fireproof. Bricks have been a cornerstone of engineering for nearly 10,000 years. But when brick construction goes bad, the results can be deadly. As brick construction ages, the mortar that binds the bricks together can wash away. Without regular maintenance, once solid brick walls can become death traps. Nowhere is the need for proper building maintenance more clear than in New York City. It is home to nearly 600,000 brick structures many of them unreinforced masonry construction. This is New York City's Center for Emergency Response. It is also the headquarters for the city's top authority for building safety, the Building Department Special Forensic Unit. We can show the collapse condition inside the building. You can look at uh, seven. Uh, Today, they are on their way to inspect an aging and abandoned group of apartment buildings in Harlem, which are in danger of collapse. Harlem has some of the most beautiful housing stock in the city. Much of it more than 100 years old and carefully restored. But some buildings have missed out on Harlem's recent boom. Today, the forensic team is evaluating the safety conditions of a group of apartment blocks built in the 1890s. They have been abandoned by their owners and now belong to the city's Department of Housing which must evaluate if the brick structures can be saved or must be torn down. Very careful, of course. Visiting the upper part of the building poses a special risk from ceiling collapse. Any misstep here could be deadly. Second floor joists are collapsed in this area right above us. While the wooden interior floors have collapsed, the building's brick walls remain solid. In the wall seems pretty acceptable from, from the interior, but Crucial mortar shows signs of decay. The mortar is just, you can remove it with the finger. To make this building habitable once again, these gaps must be repaired. The team's evaluation today is that the buildings are a hazard, but their brick frames essentially sound. The final decision to restore or rebuild can now be made by city officials. I believe the buildings can be brought back relatively easily. It's commonly done. We have one right here behind us. We have the original version of the building which has been restored, and right beside it we have a hundred-year-old uh, neglected, abandoned uh, six-story walk-up. But from the earliest brick construction up to modern buildings, these structures have all faced a lethal enemy. Earthquakes. When the earth starts to buckle, Brick's inability to move from side to side with the quake can bring them tumbling down. And when the ground shakes and a building tries to follow the ground, some parts of the building go into tension and some go into compression. The parts that go into compression, not a problem. But the parts that go into tension, really bad news for Brick's. From San Francisco to Los Angeles, to Iran, to the Philippines, the picture repeats itself. In the aftermath of a seismic event, brick buildings are often reduced to piles of rubble. A primary victim of earthquakes are buildings with traditional brick construction. 
With no steel or other reinforcement, their structural stability can fail with a strong enough force. For decades, engineers have been seeking to solve the weakness of mortar joints. A new technology is currently being employed in Tacoma, Washington. When completed, this six-story building will provide apartments to faculty and students at the University of Washington. Erected with a central core of steel and concrete, the building will be faced with more than 10,000 bricks. To secure them to the building, Engineers are using a new invention, the seismic tie. Made of steel, the ties literally attach the bricks to the interior concrete and steel structure of the building. The ties we're using are attached like this, and then the 9-gauge wire nestles into it, which allows the building to move different from the masonry. The masonry can shift up and down this much compared to the backup of the building and still be attached to the building. The ties permit the brick walls to move independently of the primary building during a seismic event, but still remain attached. Thus, the mortar and bricks are able to move in unison, eliminating the tension that causes them to break under force. Securing the brick to the structure of this building is crucial. Tacoma and nearby Seattle sit directly on a fault line. February 28, 2001, 10.54 a.m. The Seattle region experiences a shock registering a magnitude of 6.8. Many of Seattle's landmark brick structures suffer severe damage. Brick mason Jim Reynolds is working on a construction site when the quake hits but it's one equipped with seismic ties. The uh, new buildings we were working on had masonry veneer. Because of the seismic attachment, the brick it, uh, just undulated with the wave-like motion of the earthquake. The seismic tie has great potential for new construction. But what about existing brick structures? There are countless brick buildings in earthquake zones all across the country. But if reinforcement isn't done, many of these buildings are little more than sitting ducks. In many instances, adding steel or concrete or installing seismic ties is costly or impossible. But a new technology is attempting to solve the problem by reinforcing brick from the outside. It's a space-age fiberglass fabric with five times the strength of steel this fabric can permanently bond to brick with a special epoxy. The fabric is designed to help a brick wall survive the force of an earthquake. You're combining the positive attributes of a brick wall, which are very good in compression, with the positive attributes of composites, which are very good in tension. A properly adhered and bound building won't drop its brick on bystanders in a seismic event. You still preserve the brick, the epoxy reinforcement is very strong. In this test, the sledgehammer simulates the same type of violent force a brick wall encounters in an earthquake. When the sledgehammer strikes the side of the wall that has not been treated with the fabric, it crumbles. Strike after strike, the mortar and bricks fail. Brick by brick, the wall collapses. On the side of the wall treated with the fabric, the results are incredibly different. With each strike, the fabric disperses the force. The bricks and mortar are held securely in place. This fabric has incredible potential. It could provide greater support and safety for countless unreinforced brick buildings around the world. For nearly 10,000 years, brick has given shape to our world. From simple blocks of mud, to composite buildings, to space-age technology, human ingenuity continues to reinvent brick 
keeping this ancient creation on the cutting edge of modern construction. But this material's greatest attribute 